On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about and answer the question, why do people sometimes have a shoulder shrug sign? There's a bunch of reasons. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I am joined by the physical therapy and strength and conditioning team, as well as some of our PT students from Champion PT and Performance up in Boston, Massachusetts. We're here answering all your questions, physical therapy, fitness, strength, conditioning, sports, performance, business, career advice. We do it all, right, guys? We do it all? Everything. <laughs> it was funny. I'm trying to pick the questions for this week's, uh, this, this week's podcast, and uh, I almost went with a question. I was like, oh, that's a good question. And I realized like, we've probably, we already answered it like twice, so we're, we're starting to get repetitive. But you know what? I, I thought to myself, that's actually kind of cool. Because you know what, any we're over 200 episodes now, and I don't even know how, how, what is that four years, five years yeah. that we've been doing this. It's kind of weird, right? It's kind of like we're either we're 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 uh, we're very very consistent, right? Very reliable. I don't know if that's good or bad, but we're uh, we're always here. But so we do this for four or five years. But you know what, I think our opinions have slightly changed to something we probably answered a couple of years ago, and we have some other great minds on the podcast. So um, this week's not like a repeat question or anything. I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but from here, I think I'd like to uh, introduce the team. So as always, we have Lenny McCrina, Dave Tilly, uh, Dan Pope, Mike Scaduto, Lisa Russell from the physical therapy department. Dewesh Podell is now our executive vice president of strength and conditioning training and performance development in players and in persons, right? We're going to have a new title for, for Dewey like every time we have one. And then Len, do we have any physical therapy students today? We may. We uh, re-invited them back, and it was great to have them back. Uh, there was a little layoff because of COVID, and then we thought, why are they not with us? So um, <laughs> they are back to help read the questions and maybe give some input as well. So we have Joe Mijet. Uh, we'll get this before. Mijet. Joe, uh, he is from the University of Delaware at Blue Hens. Uh, the home of our friend Lynn Snyder Mackler, and he uh, comes to us uh, from Tennessee. Um, and we also have Ray Stotzer, who is uh, home in Georgia, but goes to the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Go Blazers. I like it. I like it. So now, Joe, obviously, you have some big shoes to fill because because Ray did last week's question, and he nailed it, right? Did he not nail it, everybody? Twitter, I mean, Twitter was a buzz. I mean, it's crazy. So we're pretty good. I, I, so Joe, you got some big shoes. I like the Lynn Snyder Mackler reference right there, Lynn. So we're going to challenge you, Lynn, if you're listening to this, which I know probably not, if you are, I want you to tweet at us and yell at me. I'll probably get confused because you do that every few days to me, but i look forward to, I look forward to hearing if Lynn's watching the podcast. So hi, Lynn. So Joe, first off, why don't, you, why don't you clarify your name since you've known Lenny now. He's your, he's your ACCCE and you've known him for 12 yep. weeks. Why don't, you, why don't yep. you clarify how to pronounce your name? Sure. Yeah, I appreciate the efforts. So Majet, <laughs> Majet is Majet. how I pronounce that. Makes sense. That's how I would have pronounced it. So, yeah, syllable so. is different than I would expect. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a, that's a, yeah, no, I like it. All right. So, Joe, what do we have for questions today? All right. So Anthony from California asks, why after post-op shoulder surgery, do my patients have issues with glenohumeral separation or early scapular upward rotation? Ooh, I like that, Anthony. And I like how you actually put those two things in there. That was kind of interesting. So, so after shoulder surgery, and we, we can probably talk about this post-op and not post-op too, although post-op tends to differ a little bit, but why do people have issues with glenohumeral separation so what i'm what i'm getting from that is separation of the humerus from the scapula maybe they're like elevating together and it sure looks like maybe there's some like excessive uh early scapular upper rotation i like this this is a good question um and there's more than one reason right so who wants to start dave would you like this uh would you like to start this one off 
Only because I literally had a case yesterday where it was applicable. Uh, yeah, so I had a, a young gymnast who was doing something, and she essentially got her arm caught behind her when she was landing and, uh, like, hyperextended her shoulder. And uh, she had, like, a pretty gnarly brachial plexus uh, injury. And uh, she'd been through a lot of PT and stuff like that. But I think just basic soft tissue flexibility was overlooked, unfortunately. They were working a lot on, like, her clavicle and her neck because mm. it hurt. But um, she had a significant amount of soft tissue stiffness under her arm because her arm was in a sling for a while because it was, like, propped up to, to decompress the, the area but also she just hadn't used her arm in a really long time and so she had an enormous amount of like Terry's major and lapsedness that I think kind of went under uh, underlooked and she had great capsular mobility super lax but um, she just hadn't used her arm overhead in a long time so um, as we know the Terry's major attaches right to the scap and I think some research shows that the lat can have a pretty good attachment as well in some people so if you lack basic soft tissue motion and you try to raise your arm overhead and you can't get the separation, it's going to tug the scap along for the ride. And that was giving her a lot of occlusion pain. So yeah, just basic soft tissue mobility, I think is sometimes easy, but you know, missed. I like it. Are we going with occlusion pain now? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? I just made it up. Oh, did we get rid of impingement? <laughs> because impi you can't, we can't say impingement anymore. You get well, yelled at. It was, at, huh? it was yeah, thoracic. Geez. It was thoracic like compression. You know, she had tingles, not pain. All right. I'll give you that. So now, is there any chance she had some nerve stuff going? Is that was, was that part of it? Yeah. Well, she definitely did. So we tested that active range of motion. You know, I was worried about some serratus or neural damage, but passively she had really good motion, you know, up to a certain point. So there could just be a straight up weakness, but she was like nine months out of the injury. So sensitivity was, definitely oh. there. she had some allodynia if you're into that world, but uh, it wasn't like, you know, she had overt like muscle wasting. I like, all right. So that, that, so that, that's a great way to differentiate too with the nerve type thing too, is that it was very chronic. So it's not like she had just a quick traction injury, the plexus. That's I like that one. And she didn't have some wasting atrophy stuff. That's a good one. So, all right. So that's a good example. That's somebody that's super loose, right? We have a lax patient, somebody that has a lot of mobility and for some reason she was vulnerable to this. So she just had some soft tissue stuff, maybe some guarding, some self restriction, some, some mobility concerns, just for prolonged positioning in there. And man, that Terry's major, like Dave says, that thing gets gnarly, right? That thing gets like really dense and contracted. It seems like it's one of those muscles that really tends to contract in my yeah, mind. It, so. was, it was one of those cases where I got lucky where I worked <clears> on it and she got like 10 degrees of elevation better. It was like, it's not going to stay, but like, she was like, Whoa, this right. is crazy. So and you know, I, I, I mean, it's hard to say this, but I, I think I'm close to feeling this way, but like, I feel like non-operatively, that might be one of the bigger reasons that I see this is that somebody has soft tissue restrictions that is maybe limiting humeral elevation. So that way then the scapula just goes up. Cause remember your, your, your brain, your body is just trying to get your arm over your head. It doesn't really care how it does that. Right. So it's, if it needs to move the scapula more because the humerus isn't moving fine. Right. And that's kind of what's the thing. All right. So that's a good one. We got some soft tissue tightness. Who wants to throw one else into the ring? Leonard? I will. I will. And it kind of goes off of Dave's, the girl he had recently, because I happened to get the MRI results emailed. Um, and she had also a rotator cuff issue. Okay. which goes into um, what I will say is another option to look at, especially in a post-op shoulder, is the status of the rotator cuff. So this girl, who is very young, um, not to give away too much detail, she had a rotator cuff, what they were calling a rotator cuff tear um, in her shoulder. So if this wow. rotator cuff is not functioning well or not, um, you know, if there's some kind of issue to the rotator cuff, you're not going to be able to raise your shoulder up as easily as if the rotator cuff is attached well, right? So in a, in a post-op shoulder, if the rotator cuff is repaired or there's some kind of issue to the cuff, it was irreparable, you're not going to get the normal uh, arthrokinematics going on the shoulder and you're going to get that, that superior migration of the humeral head, which looks like this, um, you know, when somebody tries to raise their shoulder up. So what's the status of the, of the rotator cuff in that person that had um, shoulder surgery. And I would say it's probably healing needs to get stronger or it's not doing well and needs more work, you know? Right. And you know, oftentimes, like, even if you have like a, you could have a full thickness cuff tear in your supraspinatus. If your anterior and your posterior cuff are strong enough to stabilize, you can still somehow, you know, elevate that arm without yeah. a shrug sometimes. Yeah. So, but not always. Right. So right. it could be, could be weakness, could be a cuff tear like her, by the way, Dave, Totally left out a big piece of that puzzle in your story, by the way. I didn't want to go. I don't want to steal too much thunder. <laughs> right, good. That's a good point. You actually had someone that has like every reason. So yeah, I don't want yeah, to go so, with the, the capsular things. The, the <laughs> well, that <laughs> MRI showed up at the very end of the session. I was like, hey, by the way, I'm, uh, we got an MRI right here. It's like, oops. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that, and that, that changes everything going forward. So that's, so that's a good one. So, so we got some soft tissue tightness. We have rotator cuff dysfunction and or tearing. You can have either of 
those that could potentially uh, limit that. So again, maybe your rotator cuff isn't stabilizing. You're either superior migrating or maybe the humerus isn't going up and your brain just says, I got to get my arm up. What does it do? It upwardly rotates your scapular more. It gets it up there more. I like that. Um, who else? I think Dan had maybe another one did, or did Lenny steal your thunder? No, I mean, I could talk about this one too. Um, I think the big one, so I guess Dave was talking a little bit more about stiffness of the, the lats and Terry's major. Of course, that could be the capsule as well, right? So if you don't have good motion coming from the shoulder joint itself, you're going to try to make up that motion that's coming from uh, the shoulder blade instead. And the last one, and uh, I think it's mostly obvious post-op, is, is pain. Pain's a big one, you know? If one-third of your motion is supposed to be coming from your shoulder blade and two-thirds is supposed to come from the shoulder joint, the shoulder joint just hurts like heck, you're probably going to move more through the shoulder blade, you know? So we think, okay, the upper trap is too active, but maybe the upper trap is just trying to help you out because your shoulder's too weak, too painful, too stiff, whatever reason it, it is. Right. That's excellent. That's actually a really good point too, that sometimes we, we don't give enough credit to is like, if it just hurts to move your humerus, you might even have like osteoarthritis of the shoulder joint, right? Or you may have, you know, something going on like that, that, that causes some dis discomfort. And then they, they, again, just want to get their arm up overhead. I like that. Um, and then obviously, you know, the capsular stuff and, you know, you said it quick, probably because in your head, it's pretty obvious, but like, you know, maybe not for everybody it is, but like if you have capsular tightness, like an adhesive capsulitis, frozen shoulder type thing, then obviously you're not going to be able to get the normal motion of the glenohumeral joint and you're going to be stiff and your scaps going to go going to go even more now post-operatively what i would add too is that if you're having a stabilization procedure so somebody that has like a capsule repair labor repair something like that a capsular shift anything where we're actually working on decreasing the capsular mobility right so we're trying to to treat instability then oftentimes that can be over tightened right? And that can be excessively tightened. And then what happens is, is you don't have the normal arthrokinematics of the glenohumeral joint. So, um, you know, to go back to the original question from Anthony, I think pain's a good one that, that Dan said. I think rotator cuff dysfunction's a good one that Lenny said. And then I would add just like, you know, the specific capsular tightness from the surgical procedure may be limiting it. And remember, the brain just wants to do what's easiest. It wants to take the path of least resistance. So sometimes if you're seeing this, it's not necessarily like, it's that it's a bad sign sometimes you may just have to do just a few simple things to just like teach them or work on something or get them on a little bit of pain and then all of a sudden it'll get a little bit better they're just taking the path of least resistance Make sense yeah. so i think it was good i think we nailed it i think we covered like you know uh, the vast majority of reasons i mean there may be some other ones out there but i think those are going to probably cover 99 percent of your, your 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 people that have a shoulder shrug so great question if you have anything like that you know, again, career advice, PT, fitness, strength, condition, sports, performance, anything you guys want to talk about, head to MikeRyan.com, click on that podcast link. And as always, please, please, please keep spreading the word, share this with your friends, share it on Facebook and Instagram so we can get the word out. That would be awesome. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.